a different frequency. Okay. So Fourier have analyzed that. And okay, for example, like this. Okay, so this is the final expression of the square wave. So we have a summation of a sinusoidal waveform with different magnitude, where you can see here for VDC over n pi, where n is actually numbers uh, starting from n is equal to 1, 3, 5, 7, and so on, and a different frequency. Okay, we have n omega naught t, so n. So, so it for you say like that, okay. So, meaning that uh, if you I plot, okay. So actually, it is actually consisted of um, sinusoidal with different magnitude and different frequency. So, for example, this one we have uh, this one we call the the first, which is n is equal to one. So this one is v one. This is when n is equal to three. So we have v three. So V1 is actually 4 VDC over pi, and V3 is 4 VDC over 3 pi. Okay, and then this is N is equal to 5, which is this one, V5 is equal to 4 VDC over 5 pi. Okay, and as you can see, the frequency is also increased for N equal to 5. So the frequency is actually 5 times of the frequency of number 1. So this is F1. Okay, so for frequency number three is actually three f three times of f one. Okay, so the number component n one here we call this one as uh, our fundamental. So okay, and then the third n is equal to three, so we call this one is the third harmonics, and number five is fifth harmonics, and so on. If you have a uh, seven nine, so we call that seven harmonics, harmonics number nine, and so on. Okay, so the fundamental is the one that we want. Okay, this is the one that we want to have. So meaning that if you plot uh, the amplitude versus uh, versus this one is the number of number of harmonics. Okay, and then frequency. Okay, so if the frequency of F one is fifty hertz. So this one is 50 hertz. This one should be 150 hertz. This one 250. This one just 350 and so on, right? So as you can see here, we want this fundamental only. So what you need to do is to have a filter. Okay, this one uh, usually we call low pass filter. Low pass filter where the frequency of this one we call F uh, out or cut off. Okay, you can calculate by using uh, LC. The simplest filter, okay, so maybe this one is the DC and then this is uh, AC output. So the simplest filter is the low pass filter, which is LC C. filter. So this is your LC filter. The values. It depends on the frequency of cut of that you want. Okay. And connected with the loop. Okay. So, but this one is not, will, will not be inside your syllabus. Your syllabus is actually to know, we just want you to just, we want you to know that this um, uh, square wave is consisted of several sinusoidal and you should able to plot the spectrum. Okay. So this one, you should able to know that V1, this one is V1 for VDC over pi. And then this magnitude is actually uh, for VDC over 3 pi, or you can also like that, like, like V1 over 3. Okay. And this one is V1 over 5, V1 over 7, V1 over 9, and so on. Okay. So this is for the voltage. What about the current? So when you want to uh, calculate the current harmonics, so I n, so what you need to do is actually V n over Z n. Z n is actually refer to the load actually. Okay, the impedance of the load. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, to this for the square wave inverter, so it is very simple, straightforward. 
but the difficulty on the inverter is that the design of the low pass filter is very difficult why because as you can see here the separation or from the fundamental and the third harmonics okay 150 and 50 hertz so it, it, the, the gap is very very small so when you want to design the filter here for example you want to cut off at 100 hertz okay so the, the 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 value of the l and c will be very very large so sometimes the values of l and c is not in the market so that's why uh to filter out here is very difficult okay and um to so since this one is a square wave okay so uh it contains a lot of harmonics okay if your sinusoid if your ac voltage is a, is a sinusoidal meaning that there is no harmonics you only contain the first component that is good okay but if you have uh, the waveform uh, rather than sinusoidal such as like this square wave so this shows that your voltage output contains harmonics okay so how we uh, calculate or we determine the contents of the harmonics inside the waveform is by using this formula the total harmonics distortion okay so this is applied for power system okay so because uh, in power system we must have that voltage in voltage in and current in a sinusoidal waveform okay so if you have if you voltage and current waveform is not sinusoidal then your your power quality will be degraded okay it's not very good so how to determine that is by using this equation okay so this is the vnrms the summation meaning that what you need to do is to calculate all the uh, the harmonics values okay the harmonic value that you obtained earlier this one is actually um, is actually a maximum value okay maximum value so you need to convert into RMS. So you need uh, square root two plus uh, V five square root two plus uh, V seven square root two and so on until um, the desired numbers of how many that you want. Okay, over your V one square root two. Oh, sorry, this one must be square. Must be square. Okay, this is by using this. Or if you know this is V out, if you know the RMS value for the voltage output, then you can use this equation. So V out RMS minus V1, which is this one is actually equal to the summation of the harmonics. Okay. Actually equals your V out RMS minus V1, you should get only the harmonics value, which is same this one okay so this is the thd voltage this one is just a ratio or in percentage okay the best thd is zero zero percent meaning that your output is sinusoidal but for our power system uh, there is a regulation where the thd should be at least um, must be lower than five percent so that is our power system requirement okay and this is for the thdi so the same equation but uh, you just substitute the voltage with the current and the current is uh, this one okay and as you can see this is the formula so this is your vn to calculate in okay and then uh, zn so as you can see this is your load so this is uh, when n is equal to one so r square plus uh, omega naught l square okay and for to obtain uh, the impedance that related to the harmonics numbers which is n is equal to three five and seven what you need to do is um, the inductor value you need to multiply with n okay 
So you will for different frequency. So for different um sorry for different harmonics, the value of the impedance is different. Okay, I think this one has been shown in my uh uh video exercise. I think you should look at it because this is a very basic. Okay, and then it will be also inside your final exam. Okay, please look at the my video. And this is the example. I think this example that have been discussed in my video. Okay, I hope you have already uh, looked at it. Uh, okay, so this is quasi square wave. The difference of the quasi square wave and square wave is that um, we can eliminate by using this one. We can. one harmonics component for example if you uh, draw the voltage output with the frequency uh, with the number of harmonics so this is number one this is number three so this is uh, one three five seven so the magnitude of the harmonics will be decreased when the number of n is increased okay Okay, so for example, this one is 50 hertz, this one is 150 hertz. So, um, as stated before, for the square wave, the, the difficulty is because the, the location of the third harmonics and our fundamental is too small. So, we can use quasi square wave to eliminate, okay, to eliminate this, uh, the third harmonic. by using quasi square wave how is actually by determine by using alpha values so by determining the alpha values okay so based on we look at the fourier series to get the equation of this output voltage okay so based on the equation of the fourier so if you are using quasi square wave the voltage component is Vn equal to 4 Vdc and alpha, right? It's actually similar to the cross, uh, to the square wave, but with an additional function, which is cos and alpha. Okay, meaning that for V1 is 4 Vdc over pi cos alpha. For V3 is 4 Vdc over 3 pi cos 3 alpha and so on okay so and then and then for v5 is 4 vdc over 5 cos 5 alpha so right now as mentioned before by using quasi square wave we can eliminate one harmonics so usually we choose harmonics number three Right, so how to eliminate harmonic number three and it's actually by appropriating, uh, appropriately choose the angle. So to eliminate the harmonic number three, you need to use this equation. Okay, to determine what harmonic that you want to eliminate. For example, I want to eliminate harmonic number three. So just substitute N with three. So 90 or three should get 30 degrees. So to eliminate harmonic number three, alpha should be 30 degrees. So this can be proved by using this equation. Okay, so 4 VDC over 3 pi cos 3 multiply with 30 degrees. Right now the alpha is 30 degrees. As you can see, cos uh, 3 multiply with 30 degrees, 90 degrees. So cos 90 degrees, 0. So meaning that it is 0. So that's why. If you want to eliminate harmonic number 5, for example, so the alpha should be 90 over 5. So this one should be 18 degrees. And if you put 18 degrees here, 5 multiply with uh, uh, 18, you should get that V5 is 0. Okay? So that is the difference between uh, quasi-square wave and also square wave.
That's mean doctor uh, alpha is always uh, zero, yeah? Sorry? That's mean alpha, always uh, zero. Alpha? Yes. Okay, what do you mean by zero? I mean uh, in every value, uh, alpha ha uh, has the same uh, same value. Yes, yes, yes. Meaning See? that uh, when you say, when you put, when for example, when you want to eliminate how many is number three, so the alpha is 30, meaning that for V1 is also 30 degrees. This one should be 90 degrees. This one 5 multiplied with 30, so this one 150 degrees. So this one should be 0. But this has a value, so this one also have a value. Is that the question? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, so if you choose 18 degrees, then this one is cos 18. This one is uh, 3 multiplied with 18 is uh, what? 54 degrees. And this one is, should be 90 degrees. So when you choose alpha 18, so this one will become 0. But uh, you have the fundamental and the third harmonic value. Okay. So I hope clear. So I think this one, so uh, this is actually to get the equation, actually the, the equation that used for the example usually. So V1 here and for Vn. And uh, this is for the impedance related to uh, harmonic fundamental. Okay. And this is the impedance for uh, different harmonic values. So you need to for n is equal to 2, so n equal to 3, 5, and 7, and so on. And then after that, you will obtain the value. So this is the current fundamental. Uh, this one is the current harmonics. So the important thing that you need to know is the parameters. Okay, so the fundamental voltage, fundamental current. The fundamental voltage and fundamental current is the one that we want. Okay, the one that we uh, that should be the output. Uh, 3, 5, 7, 9, and so on, we consider as a harmon harmonics we, where it should be not inside our power system. We always want to filter out these harmonics. Okay, so this is example. I think I haven't do this, but uh, I will try to do the, um, uh, the solution so that you can refer. Actually, the same uh, approach has been used for quasi square wave and quasi and the uh, square wave, but I will I will post it okay after I I have planned the solution for you. Okay, so I think this is so almost uh, thirty minutes. So this one is the uh, the one that we want to discuss today. Okay. So sinusoidal PWM. Um, so actually by using sinusoidal PWM, okay, so it provides a way to decrease the THD of the load current. So we always want the THD to be very minimum, less than 5%, okay? Uh, and then by adding filters, um, the design of the filter can be very, very small and be very, very uh, easy. Okay, because of what? Because by using PWM harmonics, okay, of the PWM filter will be um, shifted at higher frequency. For example, when you, for the square wave, you have this fundamental, and then the nearest harmonics is harmonics number three, right? And then three, five, and seven. So actually, to actually to design filter is very difficult, okay? Even though you are using a uh, quasi square wave, okay, for example, you eliminate harmonic number three, you still have harmonics number five, which is at 250 hertz. For example, if this one is 50 hertz, so your harmonic number five is at 250 hertz. So it's still quite difficult to filter out. Okay, but by using P this PWM inverter, what, you, what it will be uh, show is that we have the fundamental, but the harmonics, for example, this is 50 hertz, but the harmonics will be shifted at um, 
for example, at very high frequency, for example, 2 kilohertz, 1 kilohertz, and so on. Okay? So, as you can see, the low-pass filter can be easily designed because you can have a lot of room here to choose what is the frequency cutoff. Okay? I can choose at maybe at uh, my 1 kilohertz and so on. So, it's very easy to design the filter. So, that is the advantage of uh, PWM as compared to square wave and quasi square wave. And also, one advantage that you may not notice is that uh, in quasi square wave and square wave, okay, the V fundamental, this is the desired values, right, for VDC over pi, okay, for square wave and for quasi square wave is for VDC over pi cos alpha. So as you can see, for fundamental, uh, for quasi square wave and square wave, we cannot control, we cannot make the V1 variable. For example, maybe our load requires a value of something value, some values. Okay, so it's actually, there is no variable that we can actually control. The only variable that we control is the VDC, but usually VDC we don't want to control because it's quite, usually the values is fixed. For example, if you use a battery for your power supply, so it is fixed, you cannot control. But if you use a DC power supply at lab, then you can control it, okay? But if you are have a DC power supply, which is a battery, you cannot control the values of the DC. So meaning that uh, for square wave, you can control. Also for the quasi square wave, even though you have alpha here as your control parameters, but this alpha is not used to control V1. Alpha here is used to eliminate the harmonics, what harmonic that you want, right? So both quasi and square wave cannot be used to control. Okay, but by using PWM, we can control V1. So that is one advantage of using PWM. But the disadvantage is actually we have a complex control circuit. Okay, and also high losses uh, when switched at high frequency. Because um, to shift uh, these harmonics to a higher frequency, we need um, to switch the inverter at very high switching frequency. Okay, let's go to the concept of the PWM. So the concept of the PWM is actually using this uh, diagram where we actually, the sinusoidal as our modulating waveform is compared with the carrier waveform. This carrier waveform can be sawtooth, can be triangular, but for the, PW, for the inverter, we are using uh, triangular as our carrier. And the comparison here, meaning that uh, if uh, uh, sinusoid, V sinusoidal is greater than V triangle, so the output should be positive VDC. So this one is actually should be positive VDC. Okay, this one negative VDC. So if Vs is smaller than V triangle, so the output is negative VDC. So as simple as that. So as you can see by com doing this compar comparison, you will have a uh, pulses. Okay. But these pulses contains the information about the sinusoidal. As you can see, when we reach the maximum value here, you will see that the pulse is getting bigger and bigger. Okay. And when it is a negative cycle here, you will see that the pulse is bigger at the negative part here. So actually, these pulses is actually, uh, the width of the pulses is um, very is modulated because of this comparison. So that's why we call pulse modulating, uh, pulse width modulation. Okay. So in this PWM, there are two parameters, very important parameters. The first one we call the modulation ratio. Sometimes we call modulation index. So the same name is actually uh, the different name, but actually refer to the same parameters. Okay, modulation ratio, or sometimes 
called modulation index ma or sometimes mi okay so ma or mi the uh, the important of this mi is actually these parameters will determine what is the value of your fundamental value v1 is equal to your ma multiplied with vdc and this ma is actually can come can vary from 1 to 0 so what is ma so ma is the amplitude of the modulating signal which is the sinusoidal what is the vmax of the sinusoidal over the amplitude of the carrier signal okay so as simple as that if you want modulation index is equal to one uh, so you need the value of the maximum and the sinusoidal and the triangular is equal so ma will determine the magnitude of the fundamental okay and also magnitude of the other harmonics vn okay so MA will be more on controlling the amplitude. The second parameter is what we call the frequency modulation or MF. Okay, so what is MF? So MF is the frequency of carrier signal, which is uh, frequency of the switching, right? The frequency of the switching. So carrier signal is actually uh, also is the frequency of the switching over the frequency of the modulating signal so actually the sinusoidal so usually the sinusoidal because we want the output is 50 so usually the sinusoidal is 50 hertz okay so the mf is actually equal to the number of the location of the harmonics for example, if your switching frequency is 2 kilohertz, okay, and then your frequency sinusoidal is uh, 50 hertz, so your MF is 40. What is mean by 40? If you plot the spectrum, so this is N number, this is N, N number 1, which is your fundamental, okay. The location MF is equal to 40, meaning that the location of the harmonics is at harmonics number 40. Okay. And what is the frequency? So uh, this one is 50 hertz. So to determine the frequency of your harmonics is you need to multiply MF with the frequency of modulating, which is 50 hertz. So 50. 40 multiplied with 50 hertz so you should get 2 kilohertz so the frequency of the harmonics is 2 kilohertz which is similar to the switching frequency so that's why uh, previously i mentioned that uh, to shift the harmonics higher you need the frequency switching to be very high okay so meaning that if you want to shift at 4 kilohertz, okay, you need your frequency switching also 4 kilohertz. So as you can see here, so this is the fundamental and then this is the number of the harmony, harmonics number. So the first harmonics number is 40, which is very, very high. Okay, you can see that there is a, bad, there is a gap from the fundamental with the first harmonics here. Okay, and this harmonics is not uh, exist it's in a single harmonics. It's actually will uh, appear in terms of cluster. So we have what we call the sideband harmonics here. Okay, so cluster. So we have this one fundamental and then maybe we have the first, the first cluster. Which is equal to MF and then we have another cluster. This one is two multiplied with MF. Okay, so the harmony is actually uh, exists in term in a uh, cluster in terms of cluster, not a single harmony. Okay, they will be in a cluster. 
Okay, this is how we generate the PWM signal and so on. So uh, this one, as mentioned before, is uh, B sensor is greater than V triangular. So you have positive VDC and so on. Okay. So this one is actually how we uh, derive the equation. This is not very important. Okay, so lastly, uh, we will show that this is the spectrum. Okay. So as you can see, uh, this is the fundamental and this is MF, the first cluster of the harmonics. Okay, so the number, so this is N is the number of the harmonics, so number one, and then MF, okay, two MF, the second cluster, the third cluster, and so on. Okay, but as you can see, um, the fundamental value here is V1. And this is defined by MA BDC. Okay, but another harmonics amplitude, the relationship is not linear, it's actually non linear. Okay, that's why we have this one a table here. <coughs> okay. So, for example, I want to choose uh, this one. Okay, and uh, let's say my MF is equal to 20. So, how I plot this one? So, when MA is equal to 1, so, so this is my V out. So, this is my N and this is my frequency. And let's say my uh, frequency of the modulating, which is the sinusoidal, is 50, that's for example. Okay, so when I plot, so I have the, my fundamental, which is my V1 is equal to uh, MA is equal to 1 right now. So 1 multiplied with VDC. Okay, my frequency is equal to my frequency of the modulating, 50 hertz. Okay, and... Uh, So this is n is equal to one here, meaning that uh, the magnitude is, is one. And the first harmonics will appear at MF is equal to 20. So 20, so my frequency is 20 multiplied with, M, uh, with the modulating frequency, 50 hertz. So meaning that my frequency is around uh, 1K. Okay, 1 kilohertz, so the frequency of the harmonic is 1 kilohertz, which is equal to frequency carrier. Sometimes it gives you MF, the question is, what is the frequency carrier? Or what is the switching? So actually the frequency carrier is equal to frequency switching. How to get that is actually by MF multiply because we know that frequency carrier is over frequency of the modulating is equal to MF, right? Okay, so if given a modulating, then you can get an MF. If, if given, then you can get your frequency carrier and your frequency switching. So right now we have determined the location of your harmonics, which is appear at N is equal to 20 with a frequency of one kilohertz. But right now, what is the magnitude? What is the magnitude? This should be have a magnitude here, but we don't know what is the magnitude. So that's why we refer to this table. This table will be given. Okay. So for harmonics number is equal to MF, the magnitude is 0 0.6. So 0 0.6 from VDC. That is how we use this. And then the other one is another harmonics is uh, appear at mf plus minus 2 so mf plus minus 2 meaning that you have mf is equal to 22 okay and then mf is equal to uh, 20 minus 2 is 80 okay so the magnitude so the magnitude is this one 0 0.32 bdc 
this one also 0 0.32 BDC. So this one is when your modulation index is equal to 1, okay? Let's say uh, modulation index is equal to 0 0.8, what happened? So 0 0.8, the same one, V, this is the number, and then the frequency. And my MF is equal to maybe 20, and my modulation, uh, modulating waveform is 50 hertz, for example. Okay, so this is my uh, harmonic number one, and the frequency is equal to modulating frequency, which is 50 hertz. And this value is V1 is equal to 0 0.8 BDC. Okay, because N is equal to 1, so 0 0.8. And then uh, the harmonics will appear at MF is equal to 20, which is your harmonic number is 20. The magnitude is 0 0.82, oh, very high. 0 0.82 BDC. Okay, and then you have another harmonics at uh, M equal to 22 and N is equal to 80. The value is 0 0.22 BDC. This one also 0 0.22 BDC. Okay. So this is how we use the table. Okay, so the harmonics, the frequency here, so 20 multiplied with FM, so this one is 1K. This one, 22 multiplied with 50, so uh, 1,000, 1 1.1 kilohertz. So this one, the frequency is 18 multiplied with 50 hertz, so 900 hertz. Okay, I hope uh, you know about this one. Okay, clear? Yes, okay. Okay. This is uh, recorded, and then I think uh, after this, if you have maybe difficulty and so on, maybe your internet stability is not good, then you can refer to this one. I will upload. Okay, so let's do some exercise. Table 3.1 is given this one. This is the spectrum in terms of the in table. So for the inverter, we, this is power supply, 100 volt. So for example, I draw the circuit. Sometimes the question want you to draw the circuit. Then you, I think you should know how to draw this. Okay. So 100 volt. Okay, and then you have one leg and then the second leg. And then the load is here. So this is one S1, S2, S3, and S4. So positive, negative. So this one will be out. Okay. So RL is given. Uh, R is 10 ohm. Sorry. L is 25 millihenry. So I think this one, you need to have XL. So XL is omega L which is, if you calculate, the free frequency is 60. So 60 multiplied with 2 multiplied with 5. And then multiply with 25. You should get 9.42. This one, 10 ohm. Okay. Okay, and then by using MA is 0 0.8, MF is 21, okay, meaning that uh, 0 0.8, so meaning that you need to use this column, okay. <clears throat> so right now, my MF is, right now, is 21, and this one, my frequency should be 21 plus minus 2. So, can you determine for me what is the carrier frequency? Hamza and Alawi. What is the carrier frequency values? Okay. 
the carrier frequency? Yeah. For the frequency, always refer to MF. What is MF? What is the equation for MF? Uh, you mean from the table or? No, the use, uh, from the table is only uh, magnitude. We don't have any information about frequency from this table. Uh, frequency is 1 over T, is it? No. Right now, what, what is your T? Frequency, yes, is 1 over T. But right now, what is your, what is your period? It's not been given here. But there is an information that you can get. From MF, actually. From MF. Always refer to MF. So MF, we know, is actually the ratio between frequency carrier over the frequency modulating. This mm. frequency modulating is your output. It's actually your output frequency. So your output frequency is given 60 hertz. That is your sinusoidal output. So this one 60 over uh, this one is your frequency carrier, which is you don't know. Okay. And MF is also given 21. So meaning that your frequency carrier is 21 okay. multiplied by 60. So one two six zero hertz. This is your frequency carrier, and this one is also your frequency switching. So your switching, your power switch will switch at this frequency. Okay. Maybe for example, the second question: What is the switching frequency? Okay. This is actually a bonus question, actually. Switching frequency for this inverter is equal to your carrier frequency. So, no need to have any calculation. You just directly use. Okay? Okay. Okay. The second one, the amplitude of the, amplitude of the fundamental output voltage and current. What is the amplitude of the fundamental? Then, when refer to amplitude then you can refer to this table because this table contain the information about amplitude so right now you given 0 0.8 then you need to use this column if 0 0.5 then you need to use this column so if ma is 0 0.8 the fundamental what is the fundamental the end for the fundamental is one right so you need to use this row. So the value is this one. 0 0.8, meaning that your V1 is 0 0.8 multiplied with VDC. So VDC is given 100, so 84. So this one is 84. Okay. What about the current? V V one over uh, Z one. Yeah, I one is equal to V one over Z one. Oh, what is R? Is ten, and your X L is nine point four two, right? G. So V one is a uh, 80 volt, okay, over Z1. So Z1, I think you need to use calculator. It's very simple. Just use calculator. So make sure that you mode complex. So 10 plus 9.4 to I. And then convert into a rectangular form. Oh, polar, sorry, polar form. So you should get the magnitude, which is 13.73. Okay. 13.73. So this one should be 80 over 13.73. 5.8. Okay.
Okay, so the total power absorbed by the load. So the total power absorbed by the load, what you need to do is, we know uh, P out is the summation of all power, which is, you need to calculate P1 plus P2 plus P3 plus, uh, sorry, P1, the harmonics is actually P20 plus P22 plus P18, right? Hey, sorry, this is MF21, so 21 plus 2 is 23 actually. Okay, so P1 is I1 RMS square multiplied with R. So I1 is given 5.8. This one is a maximum value. Okay, so 5.8 square root 2 square multiplied with R. So you should get um, 5.8 square root 2 and then square multiply with R is 10 ohm, so 168 watt. Okay. And then uh, next is actually to obtain P20, uh, P for harmonics number 20, which is you need to calculate I uh, harmonics of number 20 square root 2 multiply with R, which is R is maintained here, 10 ohm. Okay, so how to calculate I20? So I20 is actually V20 over Z20. Voltage at harmony is number 20, you can calculate based on the table. This one 0 0.8, right? So MF is 21, sorry, this is 21, sorry, 21. Okay, MF 21. Okay, 21. So uh, for MF is equal, for N is equal to 21, the magnitude is 0 0.82. So, meaning that this one, 82 volt over. So, right now, your Z20 is 10 plus uh, 20 multiply with 9.42 square. Okay. So... 20, just by using calculator, 20, so I think uh, 20 multiply 9.42, so this one, 188, so just this one, 10 square plus 188 square, so just use calculator, 10 plus 188, I, and I convert to polar, so you should get 188. So 82 over 188, 0 0.42. Okay. And then, so P21 is 0 0.42 over square root 2 multiplied with resistor value. So this one needs to be square. Okay. Uh, So, 0 0.951. So, you need to repeat this again and again for 21, 23, and 19. Okay? And then you sum up. Then you will get your power absorbed by the loop.
Okay. For the THD of the load current, so it is a very simple one, which is uh, you need to THD of the current. So of the I twenty one, okay, I RMS square plus I twenty three square uh, RMS plus I uh, 19 RMS square over I1 RMS. Okay, it's because the harmonics is starting from number 21 and then plus minus 2, which is 23 and 19 over I1 RMS. Okay. The plot, plot. So, meaning that you need to plot. So, the plotting should be a very simple one. Up voltage. So, V1 is equal to uh, 0 0.82 VDC. And then, you have this one uh, at 21. And then, 19. And then, uh, at 23. 0 0.22. 0 0.22. So, this one is 0 0.82. Okay. So, Z1 0 0.8. This is number number one, so this is N and frequency 50. So this one uh, just multiply 50 with MF, then you can get your values of the harmonic uh, of the frequency. For example, 21 multiply with 50. So the frequency is at one 21 multiply. Sorry, MF. Uh, sorry, the 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 the, the fundamental is 60 hertz, right? So 60. So 60 multiply with 21. So 1, 2, 6, 0. Okay. So this one, the frequency is uh, 23 multiply with 60. So 1380. And for how many number 19, the half frequency is 1140. Okay, so usually for plotting of the harmonic spectrum, uh, the parameters important is actually the magnitude, the number of harmonics, and also the frequency of the of that harmonics. Okay. So this one filtering is not uh is not will be not inside your uh exam. So just showing that by using low pass filter, you should get that from the square wave or PWM, you can get the sinusoidal. Okay. Uh, in some application, uh, for example, to drive uh, your AC motor, okay, because AC motor requires AC supply, right? So, but uh, for AC motor drive, uh, it didn't require this filter. Okay, so you can actually from the output of the square wave, for example, you actually connect to the motor. So it will actually also run because uh, for the AC motor, inside that AC motor, you have a lot uh, a very high uh, inductance. So that's why you can filter out actually inside the motor. Okay, I think that's all. Any question regarding the PWM and so on? This is very important. Um, if you can follow me this example, then I think that is enough. Okay. Okay. Only say uh, the only thing that I want to highlight that carrier frequency is actually your switching frequency. It's actually the same. Same. Okay. Please also uh, uh, remember this equation. Frequency carrier over frequency of the modulating. So frequency of dominating is your frequency output that you desired, okay? And this one is actually frequency switching. And then another one is a MA or modulation index, which is the amplitude of your uh, sinusoidal over amplitude of your carrier. And this MA or MI is from zero to zero to one. Okay.
And um, so for example, this one, this actually, uh, this is the two parameters that you need to know. Okay. And always remember MA is actually for PWM, usually we refer to the table. Okay. But always remember that for the fundamental, uh, it's actually always like this for the fundamental. But the harmonics, for example, the other harmonics, this one, this is the harmonics you need to you to refer to the table. Because the relationship is not linear. But for the fundamental, the relationship is always use the same equation. Okay? For the F. Uh, MF, MF is not inside the table. MF is actually, uh, we determine the location of the frequency harmonics. Okay, so I think that's all for today. Uh, Inshallah, we will meet uh, next week just uh, uh, for the AC Moto. So before we go to the AC Moto, uh, we'll go briefly on the Three phase inverter. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for your attention throughout this class and uh, have a very good day. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Okay.